Well, good morning and welcome into this space and into this time of prayer, the time of gathering in the name of Jesus. And so I welcome you this morning. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. I hope that you are well, you've had a good night's sleep, are ready for a good day in our particular space in uh, Frederick County here in, Winch in the Winchester area. Uh, we have rain this morning. Um, it sounds like, you know, like that's a coming and going kind of rain. So, uh, and it's supposed to go on through the morning, which is going to mess up my walk, but that's, you know, that happens and uh, hopefully I'll get some walking in today some other time. Okay, let us get started by taking first a deep breath. Let it out slowly and gra close your eyes for a second and let's grasp the reality of a presence. The presence of our Lord is with us in the Spirit right now, no matter where we are. Jesus said, wherever two or more gather in my name, I will be among them and I will be with you till the end of the ages. And so this is a promise that, the, that I believe that we can trust in, one that I set my life by, and that as I pray, I know that each time that Jesus is present to me. And as I go about my day, I know that Jesus is present to me. So thanks be to God. Let us start with prayer. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 119, verses 145 to 176. With my whole heart I cry, answer me, O Lord, I will keep your statutes. I cry to you, save me, that I may observe your decrees. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I put my hope in your words. My eyes are awake before each watch of the night, that I may meditate on your promise. In your steadfast love hear my voice. O oh Lord, in your justice, preserve my life. Those who persecute me with evil purpose draw near. They are far from your law. Yet you are near, O oh Lord, and all your commandments are true. Long ago I learned from your decrees that you have established them forever. Look at my on my misery and rescue me. Look, for I do not know. Do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your justice. Many are my persecution persecutors and my adversaries, yet I do not swerve from your decrees. I look at the faithless with disgust, because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Preserve my life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your righteous ordinances endures forever. Princes persecute me with cause, but my heart, without cause, with my heart stands in awe of your words. I rejoice at your word like one who finds a great spoil. I hate and abhor falsehood, but I love your law. Seven times a day I praise you for your righteous ordinances. Great peace have those who love your law. Nothing can make them stumble. 
I hope for your salvation, O Lord, and fulfill your commandments. My soul keeps your decrees, and I love them exceedingly. I keep your precepts and decrees, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry could become before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your promise. My lips will pour forth praise because you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your promise for all your commandments are right. Let your hand be ready to help me for I have chosen your precepts. I long for your salvation, O Lord, and your law is my delight. Let me live that I may praise you and let your ordinances help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek out your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. In this psalm, we hear this continuous line of thought about being faithful to what God has said, being faithful to the statutes that law has, that the law, uh, and the law that God had given Israel. For us Christians, our faithfulness is to the presence of Jesus Christ. For when we are present with Jesus Christ, then we are in obedience to the statutes and the laws. That is, you know, that's natural. Whoever we are with, when, you know, in any particular time, if we are with that person, we will be acting in the same accord with them. If we are with Jesus, we will be acting in the same accord of Jesus who kept the laws perfectly, who kept them in his heart as we should. And, and uh, so by being present to Jesus, we keep the laws. Let's remember that important distinction for us who are Christian. Our gospel is gospel according to John is chapter 6 verses 1 through 15. Hear these words. After this Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and down, sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. And when he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? And he said to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. And Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon's Peter, Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? And Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, and so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. And then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they had twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. And when Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Very interesting story told by John of the feeding of the 5,000 and how Jesus again took compassion on them. He had been showing the signs of healing, signs of the coming kingdom. And then he sat down and he taught his disciples and then he saw this large crowd coming, and Jesus said, Where are we to buy bread for these people? He's not he's not asking about sending them away or anything. Let's buy bread for them. 
And of course, they said, you know, six months wages would not feed these people. And they have this, these five barley loaves and two fish. And Jesus just says, make them sit down, and he blessed them, and it multiplied. It's a great sign of the kingdom, the kingdom when we will have the, the great meal of Jesus and, and will we'll not want. We do not need to ask where it comes from, because God provides, and he provides each of, each of us each day. So we give thanks to God for his provision, for the signs that he gives us, of what his kingdom will be like when it is fully achieved, which it will be with the second coming. Let us now turn to our prayer time, our guided prayer, which I will lead us in here. I ask you to be lifting up your own supplications as you come. If you'd like, you can post here on um, the Facebook page or the YouTube, wherever you might be watching, and uh, put it, raise up your own supplications, or you can send me a private message. That would be quite fine, too. O oh Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. Mighty Lord, who sustains us in every way, we offer our gratitude for all past, present, and future blessings and grace. Fill your servants with your righteousness and make your chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. We pray for all people in their daily life and work, for our families and friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We pray for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. As Jehovah Jireh, our provider God, we ask you this day to stretch out your mighty hand and eradicate from the face of the earth forever this virus called COVID-19. We pray for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. We also pray that you, Jehovah Rapha, our healing God, would place your hand upon all those who have been stricken by this virus and restore them to full health. Be it those who have lost loved ones and are grieving. Protect all who are caring for those with this virus and keep them from contracting it themselves. Calm our fears and provide us with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Strengthen us with the joy of the Lord and help us to hold firmly to the hope that only you can provide. We pray for your churches, Reliance and Writings Chapel, for all the small and large churches that gather in the name of Jesus. And we pray for the Virginia Annual Conference, for our Bishop Sharma Lewis, the Bishop's Cabinet, for all who serve God in his church.
Build us into a spirit-led people, serving your will at every turn and around every corner. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. And we pray, too, for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as your people, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, let us turn to our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth. I, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And the third day he rose from the dead, descended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. We have a problem here. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I thank you for being with us this morning in prayer. I hope that this is meaningful to you, that it gets you lined up for the day lined up where you can appreciate the presence of Jesus being with you. We do have a God who desires to be with us and, and extends that to us an opportunity to accept that withness with him and, and will guide us and keep us through this day through the, with the work of the Spirit. I pray that uh, the Lord be with you in, in all that uh, you do this day and that all things will go as as you as you go by you know and that you'll be safe almighty god you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in the Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, go and, and be safe. Continue to wear your mask and wash your hands and keep a, a safe distance from, from others to, to defeat this. And, and, and go and, and love God and love others and, and uh, love yourself and you know, do those things and, and God will be with you. Those are part of that presence. And so I will be praying with you all week, all day day long as you go through this day in, in looking and, and seeking God's presence. large part of prayer is attentiveness, so be attentive to what God is doing in your life today. 
will go in peace, and I will see you next time. God bless.